And it's today, the 15th of June, 1988, that we can truly say the St. Helena began to be built. As um, representative in the United Kingdom for the government of St. Helena and its dependencies, it's given me great pleasure to be here today to lay the keel of our new RMS. Those of us in the United Kingdom who take air, sea, road and rail transport for granted, not to mention a daily postal service, may have difficulty in fully appreciating the importance of today's events. For St. Helenians to whom these facilities are to say the least limited, the arrival of a ship is an eagerly awaited occasion whereby scattered families are brought together either in person or by mail, friendships renewed and vital supplies brought into the island. This ship will in essence provide the very lifeblood of island life. I thank you all. Everyone talks about a journey that they go on. The RMS St. Janina isn't a ship. It's a family member. This ship was made specially for St. Helena, looking after the people of our, our little islands. I will never forget it. I doubt whether any St. Delinian uh, uh, will forget it. Sad to see it go. Very sad to see it go. Yeah, she's, she's done the island proud, actually. If anybody say that they don't miss the St. Nina, I think they're telling a lie. I name this ship St. Nina. May God bless her and all who sail in her. Big news, there she goes. There she goes. The reluctant Three starter. Days. I've worked on the RMS for uh, virtually my entire uh, working life, starting at the age of uh, 18, working on the old ship, um, slowly climbing the promotional ladder. Uh, and then I've been on this new ship now, new ship, uh, for the last 26 years. So virtually all of my, my, working, my working life. Um, I've spent more than half of my life living on the ship. Um, and so it's become part of my home. It's slowly grown and become part of me. Ship is very important to the islands because it's the only physical connection um, to the outside world. It's always been important for the island because it's been the only only link, uh, uh, purely for passengers and 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 also for cargo. So it it, it is has been of an utmost importance, and I don't think that can be understated or overstated. For St. Helenians to whom these facilities... I was the first St. Helenian UK rep. It was at a time when the, the RMS was just coming off the drawing board. And I used to go up to Aberdeen quite regularly. And then at the time when it was necessary, I was given the privilege of laying the key. She was launched in 1989. I joined this ship in Aberdeen as the second officer while she was still being built. I stayed up there for about four months and I actually accepted the ship on behalf of the government of St. Helena the, 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 the night before we sailed. It was quite emotional because it was, um, the ship is normally handed over to the captain, but the captain and then decided that as St. Lenian, it should be handed over to me, and then I then handed it over to the captain. I've been on here for 38 years, which is uh, well over half my life, so uh, it's a bit, a bit like my second home, really. I stood by this vessel when it was built for 12 months in Aberdeen and uh, have been with it uh, ever since. But I was there with the electrician initially and uh, we were just meant to be there to familiarise ourselves with the vessel. And they were taking people from, from the old ship, uh, uh, from all different ranks, and putting them up onto the new ship uh, for a short while, just to sort of familiarise ourselves with the, with the new, new ship and new operation. I actually spent about uh, three months up there. I was at the launch. It was quite, quite spectacular. 
and launches one of the inclined slipway are always spectacular because yeah. the, the ship sits there for a while and then all of a sudden it starts creeping and then just accelerates. Um, a lot of noise, a lot of creaking of timbers, and then oh, it's good fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you hope the, you've got another, enough chain there so it stops before it hits the other side of the harbour. Especially, especially in an enclosed building like that, and you've, you've got a band as well, and you've got everyone cheering. Oh, yeah. and band. Really atmospheric. And yeah. A lot of residents, a lot of echoing, so it, it's it's quite emotional. They released all the chains, that thundering sound of the ship going out there, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, yeah. You know, the last view you get we got was out through the doorway with um, the ship just at rest. We swapped over in Cardiff and uh, it was a mad dash to sort of clean up the old RMS Angelina and run up down the quayside with all our baggage, all our bits and pieces to join the new ship and to get familiarised with it. Because, you know, we hadn't seen it up to that stage. The two ships were stand to stand. And you can, you can see the picture of that ship down in the now, in the White Horse Boy, you know. And uh, so it was much easier for me to put everything into a bag and throw it from one stand to the next stand, you know, instead of carrying it all the way down the gangway, you know, so, and up the next one. You know. we, we were all quite excited to see the ship in its final stages. Um, I had seen it at the launch, and um, finally, we, when we got there, it was four months from ready, but we watched the, the progress of of the last little bits getting ready and then four sets of sea trials and finally taking it away um, that night. I remember when she first came to St. Lena on the maiden voyage and uh, I was a 10 year old kid in a boat, or 10 or 11 year old kid in a boat with a banner. And of course, we we're, were all waiting for to, to celebrate the arrival and everybody anticipating what it's gonna look like coming over the horizon. And that still stuck to me. That, that moment when she arrives. And then, of course, they had an open day in the harbour. And I think as, as an excited kid, which I didn't know I was going to be then working on the ship, as an excitable kid, I think I did the tour. It was a free tour. Uh, I did the tour, I think, five times that day. I was, I was last on the, uh, on the ship 26 years ago on, uh, on her maiden voyage. And it's bizarrely, I do remember quite a bit about it. Um, I think it was mainly the swimming pool uh, with my brothers. Um, I remember salt water. Salt water is the main thing I do remember about that pool. Um, I just remember kind of charging around, around with my brothers. It was great fun being on, being on a ship when you're eight years old, when you're kind of super small. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an adventure every day. After the saddest moments, because there wasn't hardly any sad moments on, on the ship for me. But one of the sad moments was on the way, on the maiden voyage up to um, the UK, uh, we'd left Ascension Island. On, on the evening, on an evening, you know, I heard an almighty bang, lights out, and then sort of like nasty little smell. And what had happened was, the, uh, one of the engines had uh, broken. The uh, Comrod came out of the uh, starboard engine and the ship was laid up after six weeks for four and a half months while they cut the side of the ship out, took the starboard engine out and put a new engine back in. And I thought, oh, my, our lovely ship. All sorts of things go through your mind. The first voyage was hectic, I can tell you that. You know, very... People got very, very little sleep for, you know, quite a few days, you know what I mean? But then, you know, once it was all patched up and painted, it, there she was again, and here she is. We used to do the run to the UK, leaving the UK as our home port, coming south to St. Nina via Ascension Island and Tenerife, and then on to Cape Town, and then returning all the way back. Once a year, we would go off to Tristan Lacuna. The RMS Saint Helena is is definitely the, the lifeline of this island. Without it, we would um, would be in a in a dire straits position. You know, she brings everything to the island, from your um, people, um, also your food, your, some uh, your bottled water. All the building materials that can't be sourced locally has all brought on board the RMS St. Helena. 
The RMS St. Lena is uh, very unique at St. Lena because it's specifically designed to serve the island. This very few ships you'll find in the world now that carries both passenger and cargo. I think the unique thing about the ship it is a small ship. It is very different to other passenger or cargo ships. It's unique in where she goes. It's unique in what we carry, the type of clientele, or the type of passengers that we carry. Um, a lot of these people are either islanders going to or from using the ship as a long distance ferry, or the others are on a cruise and they're looking for a cruise sort of difference in that it's, it's a working cargo ship. So they get all the mud cans as a, as a passenger, um, but likewise they're on, on a cargo ship. And, and one of the, f the very few sort of liner services as such. I think we realised as it went on how important that link with the rest of the world is to an island, especially a small island in the middle of the South Atlantic. Paul Russell at that time had a track record of building vessels which were lifelines for, for communities because it is an important part of their life and supports their, their livelihood and their economy. The uh, layout of the ship was basically uh, from a local point of view uh, on the um, type of accommodation we needed for the RMS to serve the island and the uh, working um, cargo handling uh, equipment and type of gear that we needed to serve the island because uh, the ship couldn't come alongside the dock so we had to discharge with lighters and so forth like that so it was the cargo handling aspects that uh, we were mainly interested in. Something can go short in the shops. It'll turn up when there's vessel. It'll be a few days, maybe a week, but it'll turn up. When this go, I don't know. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Uh, of course, we can carry cargo. We can carry live uh, animals. As of course, we've got a cat here on the bridge at the moment, just going all the way to the UK. Uh, we've got three dogs down there in the animal pen. Uh, we've carried um, sheep, we've carried ducks, chickens, turkeys. She's a black Labrador called Dusty. She's, she's coming from uh, Tilbury on the two-week journey to St Helena. I can't wait to see her. So the RMS has got my cargo on board and she's very dear to me. We order our supplies from all around the world. So, of course, I'm like a kid in the candy store waiting on Christmas when I get all my goodies coming in on the RMS. Um, I can't wait till the ship comes back from Cape Town or Ascension because I've got a little, little, some little goodies air freighted in. So it's really important for business. From food to a, a, a pin, a needle, um, whether they need cement, building materials, it all has to come by the ship. Royal Mail has been transporting post on ships since 1660. The RMS has been a mode of transport for Royal Mail, uh, this particular vessel for 26 years, carrying uh, vital communication between friends and loved ones. In years gone by, I can remember as a canal counting up to four or five hundred bags of Royal Mail. Today, with all the new technologies and the new ways of communicating, where we would have carried a few hundred bags, we're now carrying 30 bags. This is actually the last RMS that will carry mail uh, as a Royal Mail ship. And so we really are coming to the end of an era. This is so much more than just a way of getting to and from uh, or for just getting your mail. step on the ship from any port, it's a bit like being on St. Lena. They've got five days on the ship, so before they get here, they're already on St. Lena. 
you know, they're coming from all over the world. So when they arrive on St. Helena, the pace really slows right down. So, you know, it prepares them for the island. You know, there's a lot of St. Helenians on board. They get to hear all the stories and what to expect. So I think this is part of the unique experience. Yeah, a lot of the passengers does mention that as well. They, yeah. They feel at home already. We've carried something like 170,000 passengers on here since uh, 1990, and uh, so it's a lot of people you meet. For a ship that has sailed over a million miles, it seems in remarkably good uh, condition. You know, people remark on how well the ship's maintained, but that's because I think the, the crew takes pride in their work and they treat it like their home. The, the crew are, uh, I find them to be very attentive and cheerful and very willing. And you can't ask for more than that. Most of the crew on board are from St. Nina. However, over the years, we have brought in other uh, nationalities, but it's the crew um, and their work ethic um, and their friendliness that makes the ship a crucial part of the RMS St. Without the Saint crew, the ship would have been so different. You, you get to meet um, everybody because, um, you know, they come around the bar, we had some late nights together and we talk about different things. Yes, it was, a, it was a wonderful job, really. To me, it was the best job on the ship. What do you do, Bob? Go. <laughs> When I left home, it was nice to have that kind of transition where I didn't go straight into strangers. I was with saints, and it made me feel more at home. And because people, they, they know you, um, the majority of them are your saints, and there's other nationalities on board as well now, but uh, there, there is that little family uh, unit on board. They, they've also uh, formed the same thing, so I think it's great. The whole experience was something that you couldn't replicate anywhere else. I know some years ago taking part in the crossing of the line. I've, d I've done that. Crossing the line is like an ancient tradition. Um, it's celebrated by mariners to mark the ship crossing over the equator. And I had to um, get on board a table, go on board at this table to get my um, tummy cut open, all of my intestines come out, um, custard thrown at my face and then dumped into the pool. <laughs> the, the food's always been of very high standard. As soon as you get on the ship, you just put on loads of weight because you're just constantly eating. I always run the starter, the menu right down, always, without a doubt. <laughs> the way they've provided the, you know, different menus, the barbecues on deck, for goodness sake, you know, the... We've had functions on board and the layouts, you know, can equal any big ship. I started out here in April 2013, and I've been here ever since then. Oh, I love it. I love working with the Saints on board. They're such a friendly people. It's one of, I think, one of the biggest draw cards to the ship. The guys are so friendly. Everybody goes an extra mile to make your trip better. You know, it's such a comfort feeling. You've got five days of absolute relaxation until you get to the island. Experience the island, enjoy it. And I know for a fact many people actually look forward to those other five days traveling back home on the ship. There were, there were the challenges, but often those challenges happen behind, uh, behind the scenes. It's just like when everything sails along smoothly, you know, we forget about the engineers below, the navigation officers up top. I know there, we all have our jobs to do, but we are a team. And that is, there's no one team off, one team on. The entire ship's company on leave or here, we all mix and match. Out here, you can't 
Oh, nothing takes nobody. Just a day's back, within a day's job, and now it's another day. And I will just just when she go. As the RMS will be visiting uh, London in June to um, celebrate the life of the RMS, but also use this as an opportunity to promote St. Helena as well. I got quite emotional when I heard that uh, blast. Seeing that ship, seeing myself standing there, talking to complete strangers, having that confidence, it was the RMS that gave me that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd now like to hand you over to Miss Kittle Warboys from the St. Lena Line. Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this reception on board this very special ship, the RMS St. Helena, to mark both her historic visit to London and 26 years of sterling service to the island of St. Helena. She has provided the lifeline to the people of St. Helena, carrying food and medical supplies, building materials, and of course, the mail. She is one of only four remaining Royal Mail ships and the last working one. It is often said that passengers arrive as strangers and depart as friends. This is testament to the friendly, relaxed atmosphere on board. The customer services provided by the crew, including those who work behind the scenes, keeping the engines running and preparing the delicious food has been exemplary and is second to none. I sincerely thank each and every one of the ship's company for their dedication and hard work and always presenting a smiling face to our passengers. It is you who makes the RMS special. The RMS will be taken out of service as St. Helena looks forward to its new airport to provide the necessary access for visitors. But ladies and gentlemen, the RMS is part of our island's history and will always have a place in our hearts. Can I say thank you for your very kind invitation to join you tonight to greet RMS St. Helena here in the Port of London. It's really nice to see her here. And what an important part she's played. She's been more than just an important part of her life. She's been a crucial, um, element of your island life. Those of us who've been lucky enough to go to St. Helena, I think we might have worked out before we got there that you could not exist uh, without a proper seagoing service with the benefit of the hospitality uh, on the ship.
But of all of you who've been supporters, all of you who've achieved so much as saints here in the UK, thank you so much. Safe journeys, however much longer those are, are going to take, for all of you, uh, and all the very best for the future. One word to describe the RMS. Oh, that was difficult. Um, Excellent. Pleasure. Inspiring, actually. She is magnificent. Loyalty. Fantastic. The food. <laughs> One word, the food. Very place. Merleys, because, you know, like it or not, the main engine is the heart of the vessel. History. I think. Yeah. History. That's difficult. I think there's too many words that sums up this ship. Um, yeah, I, th I think you need to go to the dictionary and look for all the good words. And all of those good words will apply to the ship. Yeah, you can't describe all one word. You wouldn't do it justice. Does lifeline count as one word? The RMS is absolutely probably one of the, the key saints to the island. She's proved herself to be a saint. She's a saint, she's one of us. She is a saint. <laughs> she's a saint, yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. She's definitely one of the, the islander's people, for sure. The ship is a pure thoroughbred saint. Yes, 100%. 100% saint the ship is, of course. Definitely is a saint, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely is a saint, yes, true and true. I think the RMS, if it could speak, it would be proud to be a saint as well. Yes, I suppose you could say she's a bit more than a saint. <laughs> yes. Very much a saint, through and through. I would class the RMS Saint Helena as a saint. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely a saint, yeah. just didn't do a job. Did that, and it did it extremely uh, uh, well. But there is that emotional bond, and I think that's what makes it particularly special. I know that you can't ever take away the memories that have gone on inside this, this vessel. So, farewell, RMS St. Helena. St. Helena, the woman that St. Helena is named after. She's the patron saint of new discoveries. The RMS was part of a new discovery when it first started here and it brought people we were discovering the island. And I think it's just a continuum.
we're quite resilient and we're quite adaptable. So I think with time, we will adapt to this new change in our lifestyle and put them in RMS where hopefully it should be then, which is in a lovely memory box somewhere to look back on. But I do think we will adapt. Thank you. You changed my life for the better.